Okay, hello everybody. Uh, this is uh, Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Uh, welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. Uh, to, today I'm continuing in the study of the book of John. I'm going to pick up uh, chapter 14, verse 1, where I left off last time. Uh, however, if you have not seen the previous studies on John, I, I hope you will go back and watch this from the beginning. Uh, the other videos are available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. So uh, I'm a KJV firstist, so I read it first in the KJV. Uh, I also look at the Amplified Translation. Sometimes I find that to be helpful. So let's begin. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Well, that's verse 1 and verse 2. Verse 1 is uh, a, a very beautiful and, and uh, famous, well-known verse. Let me read that in the Amplified, see how it says it. Uh, Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in Him. Have faith, hold on to it, rely on it, keep going, and believe also in me. Uh, you see, this is one of the reasons the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. Um, he, he, he talks about God and he talks about himself in the same breath as though they're equal. In fact, they're one and the same. Uh, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The Father and I are one. Uh, so, uh, this is another verse. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. I mean, he's putting himself on the level with God. Well, that doesn't surprise me or those of us who've studied and know that Jesus actually claims that he is God. So he's saying, you believe in God, believe also in me. And uh, that could be very offensive to the Jews who do not believe his claims uh, and uh, <clears throat> reject that he is uh, God, the Son of God, uh, even the Messiah, the Christ. They reject that as a whole. <clears throat> so they demand a sign and uh, to prove it, uh, his claims were true. And he promises them he'll give them a sign he'll raise himself from the dead after they crucify him. Uh, so believe in Jesus. Um, believe in God. Believe also in Jesus. Who is God? Uh, and I don't mean who is God, question mark. I mean Jesus, who is God? Who He is God. He's eternal God Almighty. Uh, he is... Uh, not a created being. He's eternal. Uh, he is the, the same substance, the same essence as God the Father and the Holy Spirit. I believe in the triunity of God. There's one God, three distinct persons, uh, and yet just one God. Uh, that takes, we could spend hours, uh, countless hours, discussing that idea, that principle of doctrine. Uh, many of the church creeds for the first several centuries of church history, they wrote creeds to try to explain it and define this relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get too sidetracked into that, but this verse is really profound. It says, let not your heart be troubled. So relax, be, be calm, be confident. Don't don't worry. You you believe in God, I know that, but believe in me too. Believe in me equally. Believe in Him. Uh, regarding salvation, when it, the Bible tells us repeatedly, over and over again, um, that salvation is given to us as a free gift when we put our faith in Jesus, when we believe in him. So believing in Jesus 
simply means that we, we believe in his ability to give us life everlasting. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So when he says, I am the life, he is the source of life. He is the life giver. He alone uh, decides life and death. And, and he uh, promises us life everlasting if we'll believe in him. Believing in him means you believe in his ability to do this. It also means that you believe in his faithfulness to keep the promise. He's, he says, if you believe in me, you have life everlasting. That's a, a promise uh, from, from Jesus, a promise from God. And the Bible says God cannot lie. God cannot break a promise. So you sh should be confident. You should rest assured. You're guaranteed you're going to go to heaven because you put your faith in Jesus. So when the Bible tells us to believe in Jesus, and Jesus says here, believe in me, it means believe in my ability to save you. Believe in my ability to give you eternal life and believe that I'm going to keep my promise and, and in fact do everything I've said I would do. Now he says here, in my father's house are many mansions. Uh, if it were not so, I would have told you. Uh, I go to prepare a place for you. Um, well, this, this is talking about our eternal state of existence. And I have a, a playlist uh, titled 50 Hours in Heaven. And it's, it's not like some of these people who write books and make, make movies and, and, and say, I, I had died and I went up to heaven. Uh, this is the experience I had and I, and it wasn't the right time. So God sent me back right, to tell you this. Well, um, I don't believe those stories at all, but, um, the, my playlist 50 hours in heaven is not based on a, me spending 50 hours in heaven and telling you about it. It's just simply that the Bible study itself took 50 hours, 50 hours of Bible study on the subject of heaven. And someone made a comment after the first couple of videos and said, you've been talking about this for four hours. I mean, how long can you go on talking about heaven? Um, so I hope you will watch that uh, study, 50 hours in heaven. And, but this is, of course, just a, a small part of that whole, uh, the idea of studying about heaven is that Jesus says in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. If you put your faith in Jesus, he promises you, he has a place for you in heaven. This translation says it's a mansion. Um, but I'm sure of it. Or whatever Jesus has for us in, in eternity, in our eternal existence. By the way, it's not going to be eternally existing as some spirit being in some ethereal other dimension. It's going to be existing with actual body, physical body. Uh, just as Jesus had a physical body after his resurrection, we will have that kind of a body and we will live on the Bible calls it, new heavens and new earth. God will create, recreate the heavens and the earth and, and give us new glorified bodies that live forever, never get sick uh, or die again. And uh, there will be no more death or sorrow or crying, tears, and we'll be living paradise on earth forever. And so he's, he's just kind of just giving us a little taste of, of what he has waiting for us. He's preparing a mansion for us. Now, let me see. See how that uh, says that. Uh, in, no, let's go to verse three in the in the KJV. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. If I go and prepare a place for you, well, he's going to go away. He's talked about this in previous chapters in John about how he's going someplace and they cannot go with him. Uh, uh, and that's, he's going to the cross. He's going to die. He's going to the tomb. He'll be raised. He'll walk among 500 witnesses for 40 days, proving he's raised, bodily raised from the dead. And then he will ascend and go up to heaven, sit at the right hand of the father uh, and preparing a place for us right now in eternity. Uh, but he says, that's what he 
talking later. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. He will come again. We know that the scripture tells us that Jesus is coming again, a second coming. And at that time, he will raise us, everyone, everyone who's ever lived and ever died. They will be bodily resurrected. Just as he, the, his resurrection was the example of what was to come, this resurrection. And all of us will be raised bodily again. Uh, the, the people who put their faith in Jesus, they will be, uh, it's called the re resurrection of the just. We are justified in the sight of God because of our faith in Jesus. Uh, we're considered righteous because we trusted Jesus. Uh, the righteousness of Jesus is credited to us. So we are resurrected to life everlasting uh, in the new heavens and the new earth. And those people who never put their faith in Jesus, they are resurrected. It's called the resurrection of the unjust. And they are not justified. They never put their faith in Jesus. So therefore, they will not have life everlasting. They will suffer the second death. Uh, and that's where the death of the body and the soul in the, in the lake of fire. Uh, so uh, that's, he's talking about coming again. When he comes again, it's to uh, raise us all from the dead. Uh, verse 4 says, And whither I go, ye know, uh, and, and, the, and the way ye know. Um, let me read that in the verse 3 and 4 in the Amplified. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again, and I will take you to myself, so that where I am you may be also. And Verse 4, And to the place where I am going, you know the way. Now, uh, this is Thomas, of course. Uh, there seems like the two people who are really assertive uh, in the, as apostles are Peter and Thomas. Um, they boldly just say what's on their mind. And uh, we've, there's been numerous examples of, uh, of uh, Peter doing this already. And now we have Thomas uh, not being afraid to just say what's on his mind. And, he, and later on, after, after Jesus is raised from the dead, he, he's told about it, and he doesn't believe it. He says, I won't believe unless I see him and touch him with my, for myself. Uh, and then, in that fact, that in fact does, does happen when Jesus appears to him. And, but uh, uh, Thomas, so he asserts himself now, and he says, verse 5, Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? So he says, we don't know where you're going. And so therefore, how do we know the way? And of course, one of the greatest, most important verses in the Bible, John 14, 6, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, this is the biggest problem verse, maybe in the whole Bible, in that there's a, many people in the world that they, they believe in Jesus in a sense. They believe that he is a real person that actually existed in history. He's not just a myth or a legend. He's an actual historical figure. But many people believe that he was just a, uh, a, a, a great teacher uh, or a, a great moral example or a great prophet. Um, but uh, they they fail to acknowledge that he is in fact eternal God Almighty who became a man so that he could die for our sins and uh, he's the creator of all things. Uh, so they, they don't recognize him as our Savior God. But Jesus here in this verse, you, Jesus doesn't leave you this kind of an option because he says, I'm the way. He's the way, the way to heaven. Uh, so Thomas is saying, well, how do I know the way? I don't know where you're going. How do I know the way? He says, Jesus, I'm the way. But then he backs it up and says, and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he not only says, I'm the way to heaven. But he, he notice, he, he did not say, I am a way. He didn't say, I am just one of many different ways. As many people teach today that there's many different ways. All religions are various ways to get to, get to uh, heaven. 
Um, and in a way, uh, all religions do get you to heaven, but only temporarily. You go to heaven, you get judged, and you're found lacking. You never put your faith in Jesus, so you suffer the second death. Uh, but the only way to get to heaven and have eternal life and uh, live in the new heavens and new earth forever is Jesus. You must put your faith in Jesus. He says, I'm the way. Not only am I saying I am the way, but I'm saying I'm the one and only way. Uh, the way. There's no exceptions. Uh, Buddha's not the way. Muhammad's not the way. The Pope's not the way. The Virgin Mary's not the way. Jesus is the one and only way. And then, so he, so if, if you believe that there are other ways, then you have to believe that Jesus is a liar because he claimed adamantly, uh, explicitly, he is the one and only way to get to heaven. Uh, and he says, I'm the truth. Uh, the truth is, is uh, the truth. Again, it's not a, a truth. He is the truth. He is, he is the essential truth you need to believe. You need to understand and believe that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. He became a man. He died for our sins. He was raised from the dead and to prove his claims were true. And he is the author of life. He give, He's the sole source of life everlasting. And that's the truth. And you need to believe it and accept it. And then he says, uh, uh, and the life. See, so he's the life. He's the sole source of life. Not only initial life, but life everlasting. Uh, I'll see how that phrases it in the Amplified. Jesus said to him, I am the only way to God and the real truth and the real life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Okay, on to the verse 7 in the KJV. It says, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. So, <laughs> oh, now Philip Philip uh, decides he's going to ask the question. You know, have you ever listened to somebody, let's say in a, you're a teacher, and uh, uh, you're, uh, it's not simply a lecture, but it's like a seminar. They're teaching, but there's interaction allowed. You're allowed to ask questions. Raise your hand ask a question. Feel free to ask any question. There's no such thing as a stupid question. That's, that's the, uh, the setting. And so they're, 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 they feel free. They, they can ask Jesus this question. What do you mean? He says, he says, Philip saith unto him, Lord, no, no, uh, verse seven. No, I'm sorry. Verse seven and eight. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. Now, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the father and it sufficeth. So Jesus says, uh, you have seen him. You have seen the Father. Well, they don't recall ever seeing the Father. It seems like if they've ever seen God, the Father, God Almighty, they certainly would have noticed it. They would have remembered it. And he says, you've seen him. And Philip says, well, show us the Father. And that would be sufficient. Verse 9, Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? Wow. I mean, it's 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 a kind of a disappointment and a bewilderment. I, I really, I'm, you've been with me for all these years. You've been my disciple, following me, listening to me, learning from me, and you still don't know who I am. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then? Show us the Father. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Now the modalists uh, who believe that Jesus is eternal God Almighty, as I do, uh, they but they do not have a a, a distinction between Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They believe Jesus is the Father. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. And uh, he just simply changed forms. He operates in three different modes. 
and uh, that uh, there's so the idea is that it's the Jesus only viewpoint uh, that uh, Jesus is there's one God and it's Jesus but sometimes he kind of wears a mask as the Father sometimes he wears a mask as the Holy Spirit but as a Trinitarian I believe in the triunity of God that Jesus the Father and the Holy Spirit all exist as distinct uh, persons at the same time and uh, one proof of that of course is the baptism of Jesus uh, the baptism we have Jesus there bodily being baptized we have the Father's voice coming down and saying uh, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased and we have uh, the, the Holy Spirit ascending in the manner of a dove all three distinct persons of the triune God simultaneously existing and exemplifying themselves at the same moment in time at the same place so that so that to me debunks modalism uh, but uh, this verse here the modalists uh, they, they would use this verse to support their, their viewpoint that uh, he says if you've, uh, he that has seen me has seen the Father. So he, they would say, see Jesus and say, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So uh, therefore, I am the Father. Uh, of course, it begs the question, well, why is Jesus praying to the Father? Why is he having these conversations in the garden and on the cross? My God, my God, why have thou forsaken? Is he, is he like schizophrenic? Frenetic, like these people walking down the street, talking to themselves as he lost his mind and he is, 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 uh, doesn't even have mental health. <laughs> Why would he talk to the Father if he is the Father? Uh, these are the arguments against modalism. Uh, but this verse, of course, is just another way that Jesus is claiming that he is eternal God Almighty. Um, now, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Um, so uh, the, the these ancient creeds were written by the, the second, third, fourth century theologians to try to explain all this. And uh, I, I did a, a playlist on. Uh, the various creeds so you can watch the, that I, I hope you would it's very interesting uh, the, the good things and the, the bad things in these creeds uh, but it's uh, theologians attempt to try to explain it and define this better and, and uh, uh, so the idea of being in the father and the father in him it's this that there's this they're the same substance they're the same essence I think somebody explained it you know, recently. I saw a video where they said if you have a a bottled water and this water represents Jesus, uh, and you put the bottle of water into a larger bucket of water, uh, then you can say that um, the the water is in, in in Jesus and Jesus is in the water, the Father. So that's a way of illustrating this. Um, um, verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. So, of course, we also have verses that say that the works that Jesus does, of the miraculous things, were done by the Holy Spirit. And to believe that, that Jesus' miracles were done not by the Holy Spirit of God, but by the devil, uh, as the uh, Pharisees and the, the, the Jewish uh, religious leaders were claimed that they, uh, we, we don't believe that you're, the miracles you're performing are through God. We believe it's the devil, it's Beelzebub. And that's when Jesus says that you can say what you want about me, but if you if you are uh, if you say that these works are from the devil, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit because you're denying that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, is the one doing these works. Um, so uh, let me see verse 
Verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12, verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. So I'm particularly during this time of, of the apostles, well, but during the apostles' lifetimes, uh, during the, uh, the first century, uh, after Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, res uh, 40 days of, of uh, showing himself, and, and then the ascension, and then we have from that moment the beginnings of the church at Pentecost up until the end of the first century when finally all the apostles are killed off and finally John is John dies and there's no, none of the original apostles alive. Uh, during that time frame, the early church there, they they do miraculous things. Many miraculous things are done, and, and just as Jesus promised here. Um, he says, um, uh, verse 13, and whatsoever, and 13, and whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Um, if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. Now, verse 13 and 14, Jesus is saying that if you ask in him, anything of him in his name, ask God of anything in the name of Jesus. Pray, in the name of Jesus, uh, give me a, a, a brand new uh, Cadillac. Put on my, in my driveway right now. I mean, that, that's, some, some people could interpret it that way and say that that's, if you have enough faith, that anything you ask will be manifest because this is what Jesus said. And I don't claim to understand this verse. Um, let me see how it says, it states 13 and 14 in the Amplified. And I will do whatever you ask in my name as my representative. This I will do, so that the Father may be glorified and celebrated in the Son. If ye ask me anything in my name as my representative, uh, uh, I will do it. So, I've asked a lot of things in the name of Jesus. I, I pray every day. And uh, I, my prayers are always answered. Uh, but it's not always yes. So sometimes the answer is no, I don't get what I've asked for. Sometimes it's yes, I'm blessed. My prayers answer yes. And sometimes apparently the answer is no. But sometimes the answer is wait, not yet. And later on, the prayer is answered. But I do struggle with this verse, and if someone is able to explain these verses to me, I would I really appreciate uh, uh, other insights on this, because I know that there are people that believe that uh, you sh you should expect that every prayer for healing, for wealth, for any anything, uh, prayers of uh, supplication. Uh, a prayer of supplication is, I, I, I need, uh, there's a need I need supplied to me. There's something I need. I pray all day, please and thank you. Please, Jesus, help me with this. Thank you, Jesus, for that. And also, if it does, if, it, if I don't get I, I'm still saying thank you all day long for everything else I have, all the blessings I have. So it's, it's continuous talking to Jesus, please and thank you all day long. And yet, I, I think that sometimes uh, Jesus may be saying, no, I don't seem to get everything I've asked for. Uh, so I wish I could answer, uh, you know, uh, I had some great insight on this verse. Uh, and if you have some insights on it, uh, I, I'd like to hear it. Um, verse 16. Now actually, uh, that's half midpoint through this chapter. 31 verses, 
I'll pick up with verse 16 next time. Um, let me take a couple of minutes uh, now to uh, uh, make sure you understand the gospel. The gospel is a Greek word. It literally translates as, as good news. I think it's an understatement. I think it should be translated as great news or even the greatest news ever. Uh, if I told you that uh, God's going to uh, create new heavens and new earth for, for people to live with perfect health, perfect bodies that never get sick or old, and they're, they're, for eternity they'll have joy and bliss and happiness forever and ever. If I told you that's the future of all the people who put their faith in Jesus, uh, that you would think, well, that is good news. And, and that if I told you this, this is offered to you as a free gift, there's no strings attached. Uh, you're not required to join a religion, become a religious person, or follow some set of religious rules. You're only required to believe that Jesus has this ability and that he will keep his promise to give it to you if you simply put your faith in him, if you'll trust him completely, if you rely on him to provide this to you rather than trying to earn it some other way, then you're guaranteed that that's what you're going to get. Uh, that's the gospel. That's the good news. And you would certainly react. That is not only good news, that is the greatest news ever. And that's what the Bible says. The problem is, the, the, this is what I call biblical Christianity. Um, the 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 type of Christianity that's in the Bible. Uh, I call it Christianity because it's based upon uh, a, a Christian is just a person who relies completely on Jesus Christ for their salvation. They, they're, not, they're not hedging their bets and thinking, yeah, I believe in Jesus, but I, I better repent of my sins and, and, and uh, pay my tithes and do my religious works and, and uh, you know, I, I, abstain from sin and change my life and surrender my life and follow Jesus and serve Jesus and all these things. That none of that is, is added to it. They just simply have pure, unadulterated faith and trust in Jesus. And if they, that's what the Bible says. This is what a, a, a Christian is. Someone who relies completely on Jesus Christ for their salvation. And biblical Christianity, the Christianity we find in the Bible, that's what it is. Uh, I'm going to post in this video, in the description box, uh, a statement of faith that declares the basic tenets or core doctrines of Christianity, and also the uh, the Bible verses that will support this. Uh, but this is not what is being taught in other religions of the world. It's not even what's being taught in most of the churches around the world, is, even here in America. Uh, they are not teaching biblical Christianity. They're teaching the traditions of man, man-made religion. And so you need to reject all that and instead believe what the Bible says. The Bible says Jesus is eternal God Almighty. It says he came down from heaven and he became a man in order to die for our sins. And he faithfully, willingly went to the cross, suffered and died, paid for all of our sins. And then, and in that way, the door was open for us to go to heaven. Uh, there's no barrier because he paid for our sins. Uh, all that's required is that Jesus is the door. You must go through Jesus. You must trust him. And he, he proved his claims were true because he promised he would be, raise himself from the dead bodily. He would die, he'd be buried for three days, raise himself back to life, and that would be the sign to prove his claims were all true. And in fact, that's what happened. So believe this. If you believe this and you trust Jesus, then you can jump with joy right now and say, I'm guaranteed I'm going to go to heaven. And it's not because of anything I've done. I'm undeserving of it, but Jesus is so gracious and merciful and loving that he's giving it to me as a free gift. Put your faith in Jesus now and receive the gift of life everlasting. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll join me next time. I'll pick up uh, verse 16 next, next time.
bless you in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.